backtested all the different types of bone meal farm in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, and this is faster than all of them. Better than a fortress farm. Better than a fully optimized skeleton spawner. Even better than the huge moss-based bone meal farms. You'll get over 4,000 bone meal per hour, which is over 69 stacks. And we do it all with a fraction of the resources. No need to worry about chunk aligning. Stick around and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Let's go. If you're digging this out, you will need an area that is 6 by 19 by 6. And the front of the farm is basically where I'm standing here. Everything you need is in this shulker. So we have two chests, 46 hoppers, 15 each of composters, pistons, sticky pistons, and kelp. We have 30 each of sand, glass panes, and redstone dust, two water buckets, two signs, five torches, a repeater, a lever, and two and a half solid blocks. The solid blocks can be any solid blocks of your choice. Come to the front of the build, come in by two, and we're going to make this L shape. This is going to be for the storage. You can make the storage however you want. We're just going to put in a temporary storage for now. Crouch, place a hopper. This hopper can go to whatever storage you want, whether it's a chest array or it's a shulker load or something like that. So now we're going to put down 15 hoppers. First one goes into there and the rest go into here in a line. Double check to make sure that they're all pointing into each other and the last one goes in here. Let's verify it by putting in a block here and we should see it come out here. Next, we put our composters on the hoppers and then a row of solid blocks behind. Put sand behind each of the composters and then we leave a gap and we're going to put two deep of these solid blocks behind this. So make sure that it lines up like this. Get your sticky pistons, make sure that you're lining it up with the sand and the hopper and the composter and put a sticky piston on each of these. I'm going to put two solid blocks here and then dust behind each of these pistons. Put a solid block here, we need a temporary block there, knock out this central one. Let's put a redstone torch here, put our lever on this block and turn it on. Come to this side and put our redstone repeater down. That should activate all the pistons and everything is looking good. Don't turn this off just yet. Grab your sand and put the sand on each of the tops of these pistons. Now we want a hopper going into each of these composters. Standing on the sand, crouch, and facing each of the hoppers, we want another hopper into each of these. You could put a solid block in here if you want to save on resources, but occasionally, Occasionally this farm will break and you'll need to replace the sand. If you have solid blocks in there, you're not going to be able to reach in. On top of these pistons, we want another set of solid blocks. And then another one on top of those. Come out by one more. And then you're going to put redstone dust on all of these. We'll have 15. Grab your pistons and put one on each of these. So we have the hoppers, we have the sand, one block gap, and then we've got the pistons here. And this is how it looks in profile. Grab your redstone torches, put a redstone torch here, that will go out, put a block on top of it. Then we want another redstone torch here. We want a block on top of that, redstone torch here, block on top of this, and then we want a redstone torch here. On the next step, we'll put down some glass panes. So there's going to be a pane on each of these, too high. And this is essentially the guts of the build. So to stop the water getting out and to make it work properly, we're going to need to fill in the outside, decorate it however you want. For this one, I am just going to go like this. And we go one higher and along the pistons. Let's finish off this side. Before we close it all up, let's put a sign in there. Fill this part to there. Sign here. Then we need a line along here. Make yourself an infinite water source however you want. This is just so that we can fill up all this area. So we grab our buckets of water and we place them above the pistons.
So now you should have it looking so each of these is still. Fill in this water and then break this area. The next step is to grab your kelp and swim down here and put one kelp on each sand. Don't worry, you're not going to drown because of these signs here. We're actually standing in air. So that's basically it. Let's double check that we've got everything all done. So we've got this line here. Pistons are a block above the kelp. Water on the top row. We've got the glass panes in place. We have two rows of hoppers all feeding into these composters here. We have the row of hoppers that feeds into here. I like to leave this part open. You can put a door on there if you want, but otherwise leave this open because you are probably going to break it at some point and you're going to need to clear out the sand. So we have this kind of thing going. The repeater is facing that way. It's just on one tick. Torch, dust all along here. We have our torch tower over here. Now it's time to test usually takes a second or two to kind of warm up and for the water to start flowing right but that's all there is to it congratulations you now have an infinite source of bone meal in my testing this farm will produce around 69 stacks of bone meal an hour beating out the nether fortress farm skeleton spawners and even the giant moss based bone meal farms so tell me what are you going to do with all that bone meal so some reasons why this farm might break and how to fix it as you run it Sometimes the kelp plants break at the source. All you need to do is just come back and replant them. Sometimes, occasionally, you get some kelp float up to the top. Honestly, you're getting so much bone meal, it really doesn't matter. If you leave this area, if you unload these chunks while the farm is running, you will find that the sand is down the bottom here. I usually cut out this bottom one here and then I'll just run through, clean up the sand. If you have left the farm running, it will look something like this. So all you need to do is just in these gaps here, put the sand back in, and it's no big deal. You might like to leave this row of blocks here just for fixing purposes. Make sure you don't cover up the chest. And to double check, just make sure that everything falls down and is flowing nicely. Sometimes you get these weird glitches with the water. Doesn't mean anything. And this is how I decorated it on Guildrock. 